Hello, everyone. We're just waiting for a couple of secs while everyone loads into the session. I'm Terry Modisette. I'm the Executive Director of the Centre for Legal Innovation, and I'm absolutely delighted to welcome uh, all of our coaches for this incubator program um, who you can see in front of you, and they will introduce themselves shortly. And of course, all of you to this information session on the CLI Legalpreneurs Lab Innovation Incubator Information Session for 2021-22. It's, it's a mouthful, isn't it? Um, and we're covering this year uh, Australia, Asia and New Zealand. So super excited about having been able to extend that to another region as well. So let me kind of bring up the agenda and you can get a little bit of an idea about what we're going to be covering today. Um, I'll just give you a, a real quick background on the incubators and uh, then jump straight into a lot of the stuff I think you're probably on this session for, which is the nitty gritty um, of information about the incubator program this year. Um, I'll also then be handing over to the coaches and they're going to take you through each of the four areas that will be asking you to um, send your applications in for your projects. They'll talk to you a little bit about the area and they'll talk to you a little bit about how, how they will approach coaching in that area as well. And then we'll just finish up with a bit of a reminder about some key deadlines that are going to be important for you to have uh, in the front of your mind. So firstly, where do we all begin? Well, um, in 2019, it seems a long time ago now, but in 2019, we conducted a series of mini sprints, which were designed by Mel Lyon. Mel, hello. Hi. <laughs> um, when she was doing her Centred Distinguished Fellowship, and it was, it was on this topic of um, can we fix the law firm business model? Um, and you'll be pleased to know the answer resoundingly was yes. Uh, but it also led us to the point of understanding that there was a need um, for folks to be able to work on particularly innovation or transformation projects over a period of time. And we wanted to be sure that we provided the opportunity for that to happen. And so the mini sprints kind of morphed into an idea that then grew and expanded uh, into what we have here today, which is the, uh, the Innovation Incubator Program. I'm delighted to say that we're just finishing up um, our inaugural incubator program, which is run in 2019, uh, in 2020, excuse me, in 2021. Um, we didn't know that we were going to be running it quite in the circumstances that unfolded, but as it turns out, it was probably a great time. One of, one of the few silver linings, a great time to be focusing on innovation and transformation uh, projects. So I guess if we, we look at how the incubator is now, what is the purpose of the incubator program? It's to provide an opportunity for um, the folks, the successful uh, projects, for the folks that lead them and work in them to really to think about how they want to move the needle forward on something and then develop it and launch it. In some cases, it may be that, that it won't be that you'll get to the end of launching that particular project as you first conceived it. In other words, it will go through a number of changes and transformations as you go along the way. And at the end of the time that we have, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second in the incubator, um, that what you'll find is that you'll take a portion of it perhaps and that you'll run with that. The, the reason that we've been very clear to underscore the fact that this is an innovation incubator is that we often associate the word incubator or accelerator with the development of tech. And it may be that your projects have a tech element to it, but that's not the focus. Um, it's not about developing new technology. It's about taking an initiative, as I say, that may include technology and technology may enable it, but really changing an aspect or a thing, whatever the case may be, uh, that you want to change and transform and do differently in your legal practice. Um, we, are, we are focusing the incubator, so it's not all projects and all things. We're focusing it in four key areas, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. And you'll be provided support through eight sessions over nine months um, with the support of specialist coaches. And again, you can see them in front of you here, and we'll talk a little bit more about that um, shortly. So the purpose is to take you from A to Z, but we know that Z may not be as you originally conceive it, or indeed um, it, it may end somewhere before that. 
but it will in any event help you move an idea forward. So what are these areas for these projects? You see them there in front of you. The first one is building a digital strategy. And again, we will talk a little bit more about um, that in a second. Client-centered design, legal workforce 2025 and redefining value. This year's incubator, there are three out of the four areas that are brand new. So three areas we're focusing on for the first time in this incubator. Um, the only returning area is redefining value. And as the coaches explain that to you, I think it will become apparent why that is still an important topic for us to address in this program. So what does this cost you? I can kind of, you know, almost hear a sharp intake of breath here, like what's this going to cost me? Um, and you'll be pleased to know that it costs absolutely nothing. So as we pause there for a second, I want to say a couple of things. Firstly, I believe that this focus on innovation in an incubator is one of the only ones that incubator programs that does that in the world, if not the only one that does it. Um, if I'm not right about this, the other part of it is probably definitely true, which is the, probably the only sort of thing that would take this amount of time and involve this amount of energy directed at supporting and assisting you in your projects that costs nothing. So why are we doing this? Why does it cost nothing? Because the remit of the centre is basically to support the transformation of legal practice. We believe that can, done it, that can be done in big ways, but it's also very often done in small ways. So it's part of our mission really to support that. And we're really fortunate that we convinced all these coaches to come and support that too. Um, and as you'll, you'll see, um, very fortunate indeed. So who can participate? A couple of key things to kind of um, draw out here. This is not an incubator focused on individuals. It's focused on organisations. And you'll see that very clearly in the information a few times, but also in the application form itself. So which organisations are we talking about? It's pretty broad. It's law firms, it's legal departments, and we use that term very broadly to mean whether it exists in a private enterprise or whether it exists in government uh, and every other variation on that theme. It's community legal centres um, and it's alternative legal service providers. We've been extremely fortunate in our inaugural incubator to have seen uh, projects from organisations that fitted into all of those categories. So um, really, really looking forward to that happening again. Uh, where will those organisations or, or where can they be located? Um, the answer to that is Australia, uh, New Zealand, which is repeats what we did last year. But this year, as I mentioned earlier, we're adding Asia into, into that as well. Um, the maximum number of projects that we will take is 16. Um, and you would have seen the four areas before, and I'm sure worked out for yourself, that means four projects per area. Um, so 16 in total, four by four. All right, here's some bits that I need to chat with you about that are really important. Um, they're mandatory in terms of the operation and the, and the process for uh, the incubator program. And they're things that I'm, it's going to be really important that you read very thoroughly uh, before you put your application in, if you like, or uh, if you like, sign on the dotted line. So these are all requirements. Um, firstly, the frequently asked questions, FAQs. When you go on to the portion of the centre's website that houses all of this information in lots of detail, you're going to find a PDF of the FAQs. And as you look at the first page of the PDF, it's going to look like that. So you'll recognise it immediately. Not surprisingly for the first page, it's a box about key dates because we want to make sure that you don't miss any, but there's a lot more information that will follow. But that's the first page um, that you'll see. There's a link to it. You just simply need to click on it and read the whole thing very thoroughly, please. The second thing that you'll see all in the same kind of section, they're listed under each other, is a PDF of the Coaching Code of Conduct and it's going to look like this. So the coaching code of conduct is exactly as the name suggests. It is a code, it's the ground rules 
by which each of the coaching circles or under which each of the coaching circles will be conducted. So it's really important for you to read this, to understand it. If you've got any questions, to contact us about that so that we can explain if, you, if anything requires further explanation, um, anything that is there. Um, probably the key bits here that will be important for you to focus on, please read all of it, but a couple of key bits for you to focus on here is that some of the folks, some of the coaches that you'll work with in the coaching circles do operate on a consultancy basis. Um, they will not operate on a consultancy basis with you on the project that you will be doing through the incubator program. So your incubator program is separate and discreet um, and something that you're doing under the auspices of the program. If you want to engage these folks separately for a, on a remunerative basis or any basis at all, then that's something where we're going to ask for a whole bunch of waivers and all sorts of things in order to make sure that we don't muddy the waters and don't get ourselves tied in knots should that be something that you want to do. So that's the first one that's really important to get comfortable with. The second one is you're going to be conducting uh, coaching circles virtually. And so what that means is that you're going to have to be working through a platform. And from time to time, it may be that you'll want to record those sessions so that people can go back and listen to them later. Your coach can go back and listen to them later uh, to make sure that, that they're kind of making sure there's a flow from one session to the next. You're going to have to also be comfortable with where that lives. It will be a matter that you will agree as a group up front um, where that lives, where it's going to be stored and that you're happy um, with that. And obviously these days there's a big focus as there should be on privacy and data. And that's the reason that we raise this specifically. Um, and then you'll see, again, I'm not going to go through every one of these because we, I, I really want to encourage you to read it. But the other one that's obviously overarching here as well, um, and I guess I call it out as a third, but it is an overarching consideration, and that's the issue of confidentiality. So obviously, in order for you to participate in the coaching circle to help people, for people to be helped and supported, you're going to have to talk about your projects. Um, and as a result of talking about your projects, there may be things that you may feel would fall into um, a, a confidential on a confidential basis. Again, what this code is basically uh, specifically calling out is that everything discussed in the coaching circle is kept strictly confidential. Um, we, CLI, the centre, is bound by the same level of confidentiality as well. We do not ask people to enter into a non-disclosure agreement or anything of that nature. We take this coaching code of conduct very seriously on that front as we do um, all of the other points that are here. So again, I'm calling out just three things. There are obviously many more to have a look at there. Please do read it and make sure you're comfortable with it. And then we have this one. This is a new initiative this year, a six weeks intensive. You know, when we run these sort of programs and you'd kind of hope because we're the Centre for Legal Innovation, we would actually get feedback, think about it and think about what we do with that to improve the work that we do. And what came out of the first coach of the first incubator program um, and speaking with um, folks that were in that is that really it might be helpful for people to have a bit of a, a bit of a booster to be able to understand how they bring innovation projects together, how they start them, uh, what they can do to kind of get buy-in and support in their organisation, because it is an organisation project, um, and generally perhaps themselves think differently about things as well. So you'll see here, they are the objectives of the six weeks intensive to think differently, um, to, to inject into the whole process that user-centred design aspect um, to help make sure you've got the resources because sometimes that can be a big issue in moving projects forward. Get that buy-in inside and outside and also think about ROI because you know that return on investment because you your organisations are going to be investing resources. You know that could be one of the things that you'll get asked and so we want to make sure that you've got the answers to that question. So here's the schedule. And um, again, you can come, you can go back and have a look at this 
session um, at any time. Uh, and we would encourage you to, because a lot of info here, but the info is also contained on the website. So um, here's a couple of big ones. Here's the six week intensive um, schedule. It starts at the beginning of August. As you know, we kick off the program in August and it runs through towards the end of September. Um, you'll see the folks here, the faculty, the little ones, the ones with little asterisks next to them, um, you'll recognize because they're like basically here now. They're also coaches um, for this particular incubator. But you can see from the session titles what we're doing. We're taking you through that kind of mindset change, that user centered approach change, all the way through to the things and the purposes and objectives that I referred to earlier. But here's a couple of really critical things as well. Um, firstly, you'll have a coaching session at, at, at about halfway through this intensive. So that week it is, is definitely the week that you're going to in the first one, that week of the kind of towards the end of August, where you'll have your first coaching session, as I say, after the first three in your intensive. You may even want to talk, chat about some of the things you learned in that intensive at that point. And then you'll have your second coaching circle at the end of the second lot of three uh, six-week intensive sessions. Now, if you do the math there, you're going to see that in fact, right at the end of August and before the fourth coaching session, the first one in September, there's another week there, there is. So you can have a bit of a breather between basically the two groups of three. Um, so this should give you basically a really good, a really good booster and, and start. The other thing that I just wanna mention here, and this is really important as well, is that attendance at these sessions is also mandatory. So it's really important that you have this foundation and uh, groundwork in place. Um, in order to help facilitate that, we will, uh, if for any reason you can't be there at any one of these times or dates, and you'll see that they're often on a Tuesday, but there's a couple of Wednesdays there as well. Um, we will record this and make that recording available, but not downloadable for a period of two weeks thereafter. So you'll have a bit of a chance to catch up if you miss out. Why are we putting it on a timeline? Because we want to make sure that you're keeping up with everyone else in your group to be able to advance at least to the point of your second uh, coaching session um, aligned altogether, if you like. Okay, we're all good so far. Deep breath. <gasps> Don't forget to throw any questions in the Q and A if you uh, if you would like to, because we'll be sure to answer those as well. All right, I'm going to go quickly through the application process. Then I'm going to throw it over to your amazing coaches. All right, so this is what it looks like. You'll, you'll, you can see very clearly where the deadlines arise in this particular diagram. So um, the application process is online and there is a link to it again on our website. Um, the applications will be reviewed by an international panel of judges. They include myself, your coaches and a person external to the country um, that will also be looking at these applications. Um, we will let the successful applicants, the project leaders of the successful applicants know um, by email whether or not um, they have been successful. We will also let uh, the unsuccessful applicants know um, and we will do that on the 16th of July. Here's the next really, really important part to notice and that is that we will also at the time of, of extending those offers, we will have created a wait list. And so if we don't hear back from a project leader, um, as you can see noted there for the time, and it's, it's really important, uh, five o'clock on the 20th of July, five o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time, then at 5.01, we will go to the first person on the waiting list. So it is really important that you, um, you know, that you watch these deadlines. Also really important, and I want to emphasize this, there are no extensions. Um, you, will, you will see that our online application will actually cut off and you won't be able to enter a submission after five o'clock on the 5th of July. Um, the other thing that I just want to note for you is please communicate with respect to the applications to the email address that you see there lplab at collaw.edu.au, also very important, because um, we're managing and monitoring that email address 
waiting for your questions if you have any and to answer them promptly. So what's going to go into the application form? Well, again, probably not too many surprises here. We want to know information about who you are. We need to know about your project because we need something uh, in, in a reasonable amount of detail to be able to uh, compare and contrast projects to choose obviously the ones that will be successful. Um, if you want to submit an application in more than one area, remember there are four areas that you can submit to, then you will have to submit a separate application for each one. Um, so please again note that. Um, I should also mention to you that because this is a project of the Legalpreneurs Lab of the Centre, if there are individuals in organisations or firms that apply uh, that are members of the Legalpreneurs Lab, if all things are equal, um, then the folks that have members in the Legalpreneurs Lab will be given preference. Uh, now, before you, before you think that might be unfair, you can join the Legalpreneurs Lab anytime that you want to, and it is also free. So there's really no impediment for you to be able to do that. Okay, so let's, let's kind of take again a deep breath and go through all of these bits. What do you need to do right now if all of this is exciting? And you shouldn't be as excited yet as you're about to be because you're going to hear from the coaches and then you'll be much more excited. But let me just kind of run through these and I'll mention them again. First, you've got to read those FAQs, really important. Secondly, read the Coaching Code of Conduct. Thirdly, make sure that you're on board and have read and understand everything about the six week intensive booster program. And your application form won't be able to be completed unless you confirm uh, that you accept, acknowledge and accept uh, the terms and conditions out, outlined in those three documents, um, as I've just mentioned. So you apply online and again, that deadline, five o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time on the 5th of July. Okay. Last bit about resources. What do we actually do? What does the centre actually do with respect to all of this? Um, we're going to keep the whole thing rolling and um, it is a significant investment of time and resources on our part in order to be able to do that, which we are incredibly happy to do. But here's what we won't do. This bit's important because these are the resources you need to think about and be able to um, supply we're not your admin support. So we're not gonna give you secretarial support. We're not gonna make appointments for you or do research or typing in any way, shape or form. All of that is something that you need to take on board. So what do you actually do? Okay, the project that you're going to choose, and, and now we're kind of getting into the real nitty gritty for you particularly, the incubator project that you're going to choose is not just chosen by you, um, but it is something that you presumably have chosen because you really want to advance this. Maybe you've tried lots of times to get this initiative off the ground before and it hasn't gone anywhere. Maybe it's a new idea that has come out of the circumstances that you found yourself in, perhaps with a little more time in the last 12 or 15 months about wanting to do something differently, but you need help to get it done. This is something that you're going to no doubt view as being highly practical and something that is entirely tailored to your needs. We are not telling you how to do anything in relation to your project. That's something that you're going to work through in your coaching circles. This is your project for you, resourced by you, advanced by you, but given a support and an accountability that, ha that gives it real ch a real chance of being moved along. So I'm going to, this is probably going to sound a little bit harsh, forgive me, but it's important that I emphasise this bit. Um, places are going to be limited. When, when, when a place is basically um, given to you, you will have certainly earned it, but it also means that someone else hasn't been able to take that place. And so what we want to underscore for you here is that if you're into the incubator program, and we hope you are, who couldn't be? It's amazing, right? So if you're into the incubator program, we want you to be all in. We want you to understand that it requires a commitment and resources on your part uh, and to be sure that you've got those available. 
So um, here's what you'll need. Someone who's a project leader, you're going to need someone providing admin on your side to keep it all moving. You're probably going to need folks providing some sort of secretarial support uh, in terms of making plans, appointments, all of those things, chasing up, make sure stuff's happening. Um, you're going to need to attend the coaching sessions. Um, you're obviously also going to need to have attended the, the six-week uh, intensive that's kind of leading into those coaching sessions. Again, there'll be eight coaching sessions over nine months. Um, now, as we pause for one second on that, you're going to say, well, August to April, um, nine months, eight sessions. Yes, we're assuming that you might want to break somewhere in the middle there, probably around the end of the year or the early part of next year. So that's kind of been built into a reflection phase, if you like, has been built into the process. And then at the end of the day, we're going to ask you to pay it forward. You will pay nothing for this. We'd love it if you would... Um, you know, pay it forward, give back, share what you've learned with your communities. And in that way, we hope, um, encourage more people to do what you would have done. In that point, I just want to pause for one second and say, there's a lot of things that um, give pause for true reflection and joy. The coaches in this, uh, in this group is one of them. The second one here is that two of those coaches are in our inaugural program. And to be able to have created something that then uh, supports and encourages and enthuses those people to come in as coaches to this next program is amazing. So that's the sort of stuff that we're talking about when we say thank you uh, for paying it forward. Finally, ah, I get to the coaches and here they are. Uh, and now you can see them obviously in terms of which of those four areas that we were talking about before that they will be working in as well. Um, also really, really delighted here to welcome back um, some of our coaches as well uh, in, in one of the same areas and in a slightly different area. Um, I'm so glad that you enjoyed it so much this year that you're coming back and coaching again uh, for this next uh, cohort as well. So thank you. Um, with that being said, I'm now going to basically hand over to the coaches to talk you through each of their sessions. But again, just want to again remind you that these are the folks who, that will be virtually facilitating these month, monthly coaching circles. Um, they're there to help you. They're there to listen and help your projects move through. And they will be in one of these four areas. And we're going to hear from each of those areas kind of now. So building a digital strategy. Ta-da! Hi, Jemima. Hi. Thanks, Terry. I'm really excited to be part of this, um, this exciting program. Um, and I'll kick off by introducing myself and talk a little bit about our topic area and um, how we're looking to help the teams who are interested in building a digital strategy. So um, I've worked for most of my career um, as an in-house lawyer um, in, in, in terms of practice. I currently work in a dual legal and commercial role for Megaport, um, a global tech business. I've uh, been in that role for, or started that role relatively recently, having worked with Megaport as a client on and off for um, about four years. And I'm really enjoying putting my legal skill set into practice in a not purely legal role. Um, in recent years, I've spent a lot of time working with lawyers um, around the world on um, the more operational side of things, such as developing and executing strategies, selecting and implementing technology, um, improving processes, legal team transformation. Um, and you'll see there I've identified as a legal ops nerd and that's very much um, the, the, the stuff that I love. Um, I really love helping lawyers um, be more efficient and effective um, and particularly enjoy the strategy side of that. Um, I'm a, also a massive fan of using methodologies from outside the law to solve problems and to um, continuously improve. You'll learn a bit about design thinking as part of the six week intensive program that Terry's mentioned. And I'm really um, looking forward to seeing how that's put into practice. Um, and I really hope that it helps overcome the lawyer tendency that I'm sure we've all seen of wanting to get things perfect the first time. Sometimes the best outcomes are the result of initial false starts. And as Terry mentioned, where you end up at the end of this program might not be where you thought you, you would at the beginning. And I think that's fantastic. That's, that's the whole point of innovation. Um, 
importantly in the, the projects that um, Jean and I are likely to be coaching, that they'll well, probably all of them, but um, particularly in terms of a strategy, it will involve managing and implementing change of some kind. Um, humans find change pretty hard. And I think um, from what I've seen, lawyers are a special kind of humans who often find change a little bit harder than others. But I think those of us who've self-selected to be here today are probably not in that category, but others in your organisations might be. So really interested in the change management aspect of these projects. Um, and I'll, we'll talk about more of that when we talk about the projects, but I'll throw to my friend across the ditch, Gene, to introduce himself. Next slide, please, Terry. Thanks, Jemima. Um, yeah, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Jean. Um, I've uh, been a lawyer for 24 years or so now. Um, I've worked in um, both in-house, uh, but predominantly in, in private practice. Um, worked in a couple of larger firms here in New Zealand, including uh, six years as a partner at Buttle Findlay. Um, along the way, I also managed to complete an MBA at Victoria University, and that gave me plenty of ideas around the, the potential and the opportunities available for law firms to be able to innovate and do things differently. Um, I left Battlefield Land to set up Lawhawk in 2015 and we sort of opened the doors properly in 2016. So for the last five years, we've pretty much just been focused on um, areas of automating legal processes and um, improving them. Uh, we work in a variety of different ways. We work with law firms for their own um, internal purposes. We work alongside law firms, helping them to design solutions for their clients. We work directly with in-house teams, which can again include working with them for their own um, processes, or a lot more regularly is actually looking at how you can take the legal processes and, and take them out into the wider organisational processes and really build legal compliance and processes into what the organisation is doing and, and try and drive a really big impact there. And we also sell some stuff um, ourselves directly to the public, including wills and powers of attorney and things like that. So we've got pretty good experience across the board in terms of the range of different things that you might um, look to do that are different and certainly very keen to share some of that with, with other um, people, um, you know, whatever your project is, to see how we can help you to make a real impact. Um, some of the stuff that we've done has been um, been really successful. The highlight for us has probably been the work we did with Kyanga Aura, which is New Zealand's social housing provider. And in 2019, some of the work that we'd done with them won the IACCM, which is now World Commerce and Contracting. Asia Pacific Award for Operational Improvement because it was a, a neat piece of work which actually um, really not only sped up what the legal team was doing but uh, but had a big impact and just the overall speed of which they were contracting and getting their projects set up. So that's probably enough about me but I really hope that we get some great applications for this section and I'd love to work with you. So our area is building a digital strategy and here are some um, ideas around what projects might um, involve. So um, th this could be, you know, any, any number of things. And I guess it starts from the question of what is a digital strategy anyway? And I think the answer often depends on who you ask. So at its most basic, it could um, refer to how you plan to use technology to solve uh, business problems or to achieve your overall business strategy. Um, you might look at ways of using technology to market your business, to streamline a process or to communicate better with clients. Um, and I think a key part of de developing the strategy will be thinking about at what stage technology should be introduced um, and thinking about where process and document um, optimization might come in before um, you apply technology. Um, Jean, did you want to add anything there? Yeah, I think for me, the, um, the the key thing is just how making sure that everything is all going to fit together so that um, you've got a coherent overall plan and that whatever you're doing is going to deliver you the results that you want overall, and including connecting up with the overall business strategy and, and what you're trying to do as an organisation. So that's where I hope we can uh, add some value into the process. These are some of the ways that... Um we'll be looking to support your project um, to, to help you put into practice the things you learn in the intensive upfront, um, you know, keeping you accountable, helping you reflect on, on where you've got to and, you know, iterating where necessary, going back and, you know, really I, clearly identifying the challenge that you're looking to solve along the way. Jean, did you want to add anything there before we jump into the next one? 
no, I, mean, I think it'll be it'll really depend on the the particular projects and what you're trying to achieve in terms of you know where, where there are gaps and and where we might be able to help or um, you know we don't have all the answers but we're pretty well networked as well in terms of being able to to perhaps find and suggest other people who can as well. So um, it'll it'll depend a lot, but um, but I think we will be able to help plug some of the gaps that might be there in terms of getting from where you are to where you want to be. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Really looking forward to that one. I just just so topical and important right now. And um, great segue into the next one, actually, client-centred design. Jemima mentioned um, user-centred design. This one, we, we're focusing specifically on the clients, but let me hand over uh, to the wonderful Mal to kick us off and then on to Bronwyn to tell us a little bit about themselves. Thank you very much, Terry. I can't tell you how excited I am to see the three words client-centred design uh, and to think about what the projects might be like because a few years ago we wouldn't have seen design projects in these types of incubators and it's just fabulous to be able to shine a light on these types of projects and to, to assist people where we can. So look, Bronwyn and I are really excited to be able to bring our mix of experience and backgrounds um, to help guide through those client-centred design projects. And I think when you hear about our backgrounds, you'll understand why we are. Um, as you'll see on the slide there, I am, um, I'm a passionate believer in the power of design and how design-led projects can operate or can produce truly centred um, sorry, truly client-centred outcomes. And the reason why I am is because of my background, I think, and because of the, the experiences that I've had. So my present role is as Executive Director and Experience Designer at Hive Legal. How I got there, though, is a real mix of different experiences and skills that I've built up over many years. Uh, I practiced as a commercial litigator for a number of years. I have practiced in small law, big law, old law, new law. Um, I have worked in a number of different roles, but probably one of the um, roles and skills and experience that brings most to this project is working in business development and really understanding how important it is to understand or to stand in the client's shoes and to really empathise with the client. That experience then led me to really think about how I um, thought as a lawyer, how I thought as a, a business development professional, and then see how amazingly design thinking and all of the mindsets and processes that work um, from a design thinking framework really play into providing a great experience for your clients if you work through those processes. Having the opportunity to do the Distinguished Fellowship with CLI was amazing because I was able to bring that to the management side of what we do um, as a profession or an industry as well. So I am very excited to be able to bring all of those skills wrapped up in um, an experience in a different way to these projects. And I'll hand over to Bronwyn now, who will give you her background. Hi, everyone. I'm Bronwyn Einod lewis I don't want to talk too much about my background prior to the last year, because this time last year, I was sitting in the seat where you are today. I had an idea. I thought it was a pretty good idea. My family thought it was okay. The dog thought it was great, but I still wasn't sure where to go with it. So I applied and was one of the participants in the, and this is hard to say, Terry, inaugural innovation incubator. And it has been a hugely rewarding experience. So I was able to validate the project that we had. And when we hit bumps in the road, and there were a few, I had a trusted group of advisors to turn to adv for advice, and perhaps even more importantly, a, a bunch of really rowdy cheerleaders who picked me up and kept me going. So each member of my cohort taught me new skills, and the connections that were made through the incubator have been invaluable. Really excited to be here and giving something back this year, and excited to be working with Mel. So it's stating the obvious that clients have been central to my career and really should be for every legal career. Because without clients, whether a law firm is big, small, new or traditional, there just isn't a business. And there are clients out there who want to do things differently, but not everybody's listening. And here's a chance to develop a way to get that message out. As somebody who's been through the process, I encourage you to apply. The experience and support gained through the incubator 
will be both rewarding and invaluable. And I'll hand back to you, Mel. Bronwyn and I have worked together before, so it's going to be great to uh, work with Bronwyn again, especially in that uh, bringing that business development experience that we have. So in terms of the project, what type of project are we looking for? So the projects will be focusing on user-centred design to design great outcomes for clients and ultimately for you, because if we're client, if we've got happy clients because we've thought about what they need, then I think it, it really is um, produces that great environment for us to enjoy what we're doing and ultimately um, the um, that experience is something that others talk about and it can build it build up our client base from that perspective as well. So these projects really need to focus on the client journey and the pain points. So where those stresses are for your clients and then that will enable you to use the empathy to identify and develop outcomes to overcome those pain points and stress points for your clients. So when you're thinking about what your project's going to look like, really think broadly, because I think sometimes we'll think about, you know, the way that we um, provide our advices to our clients or we'll think about more limited things that we do. So think broad when you're thinking about your, your project and what it might be. It could be a product, it could be a service, it could be another offering. It could be a process that you use with your clients. It could be something that you could collaborate with your clients to develop. And it even could be ways of working that are going to assist your clients as well. So ultimately, your projects need to focus on enhancing your clients' experiences of working with you. So when you're thinking about what those projects are, think about what you can do to enhance that experience that your clients are, have, are having. Okay, and I hand back to Bronwyn now, who will let you know how we can support you with your project. So as Belle mentioned, we worked together some years ago. Um, we've been working with lawyers for many, many years to help them manage their client relationships. Um, but we now work in quite different ways using design thinking and executive coaching. So wrapping up this experience, we will work with you to challenge you to really dig deep when thinking about your clients and the client experience. Um, we'll share tools and frameworks that can be used to understand the stages of the client journey. And we'll also help you, and I know from personal experience, when there's lots going on in your life, this can be a challenge, on staying focused and centred around the user of the legal services rather than the deliverer. So we're really, really excited. We can't wait to see the projects that come in and we're looking forward to working with people um, and just showing how true design-led projects can make a difference to you and your clients. And I will now hand over um, to the amazing Catherine Thomas. Yeah, thank you, Catherine and Jan. On to Legal Workforce 2025, yay! Thank you so much. Um, Legal Workforce um, 2025, I, like, um, if there's a hotter topic at the moment, I don't know what it is, um, the legal workforce. Um, I'm really pleased to be teaming up with um, Jan Christie from Gilbert and Tobin um, to be the two coaches in, in this session. Jan um, joined us for the start of this webinar, but isn't able to be here now. So I will um, speak for her. Um, and first of all, just give you a bit of an overview um, of Jan. So, um, I guess the most important thing to say is that Jan was one of the coaches um, in the inaugural um, uh, incubator uh, last year. So she's, you know, she really has got uh, a great deal of experience of being a coach and has already spoken to me about how rewarding that experience was, you know, for her and, and hopefully um, for those that were in her coaching circle. Um, as you can see, she's capability and development manager at Gilbert and Tobin. Um, 30 years of working in law firms, started out as a lawyer, um, but a considerable amount of experience um, after that working in um, organisational um, design. Um, and I have to admit, um, uh, to actually being a bit starstruck when I was um, teamed up with Jan, because she's just so fantastic and brings such um, wonderful ideas um, to the party. So. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm really pleased to be pairing up with her. Um, so on the next slide, just a little bit of an overview um, of, of me. Um, you know, really, 
uh, keen, always have been keen to have a focus on the human side of um, legal services. And, and I do love the fact that um, the Centre for Legal Innovation, um, you know, focuses very much on that aspect as well as the technology um, side of things. Um, so as for me, my background, um, 20 um, odd years working for law firms in the UK um, and over the last five and a half years or so I've been working in Australia and my background is very much in business development and mar marketing. Um, so, you know, expertise really in that kind of communications and, and change side of things. Um, but really moved to um, much more to um, looking at workforce um, when I founded a contract lawyer service back in the UK for a large law firm there. Um, now um, I run my own business, um, Free Range Lawyers. Uh, we set up about two and a half years ago and we connect lawyers who are working remotely with law firms that are looking to flex their resource um, up and down. So, as you can imagine, it was a very different environment um, talking about remote working back in 2019 to the one that we're facing now. Um, I'm also really involved in what the college does um, and delighted that they've um, allowed me to be so involved. So I'm also a teaching fellow on the Master in Legal Business um, on um, strategy planning and strategy implementation. So that's just a bit of an overview of me. I guess what where I just wanted to sum up on, on Jan and I was, uh, we worked out that we have about 50 years of experience between us, um, uh, which uh, we couldn't quite believe when we did the calculations. But the really important point is that actually we cover a lot of ground between us. So, you know, Jan very much on that learning and development and OD side and me very much on the comms and the marketing and the change side of things. So, you know, we really do feel very well equipped to cover the full swathe of projects um, that might well come our way in um, Workforce um, 2025. 20, uh, and here are the some of, to uh, some of the topics um, that you might be um, looking at. And this is by no means exhaustive. Um, but, you know, obviously remote and hybrid work, um, but, you know, potentially uh, much more broadly looking at the future of, of work in the legal sector. I won't go through each of these in turn, um, but hopefully this gives you a sense. And um, if you don't have, um, you know, ideas already, uh, might well um, spark some, um, some thoughts and ideas for projects for you. Um, so how, how we can support your project? Um, I think your, the, the reality is that um, the needs of each project group will differ. Um, so, um, you know, we very much want to get to know you, listen to you and find out where you need the support and focus um, on those areas. You know, but broadly speaking, um, it, it's about um, helping you to plan and scope your project um, and to think clearly about what it is that you're looking at and what you're trying to achieve. Um, and then really to help you mobilize um, uh, and get going. And, um, and you know, lastly, um, also to help you um, really develop as, as people as well as groups. You know, so um, very much looking at the critical thinking side of things and um, deploying a growth mindset and so on and so forth. Um, I think what Jan and I, and I know I want to sort of focus on is we're very keen on a strengths based approach to coaching, you know, um, appreciative inquiry side of things um, where we're looking very positively um, at how we can um, support your projects. Thanks. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Um, again, just another fabulous um, new area. And, and now we turn to the last of the four areas, but by no means the least. Um, this one, we believe, retains importance and popularity and remains very topical um, to bring it back. And as I said, the only area that we are bringing back this year, which is redefining value. So on that basis, I'm going to hand over uh, to John and to Michael to chat you through this. Thanks, Terry. I might throw to you first, John. I, I will go first only because we're generations apart, so age um, before beauty, Michael. Thanks, Terry. It is great to be to be back, and it was fantastic being involved in the the tongue twister in inaugural um, in a, um, incubators program in 2020, 2021. Uh, Michael can talk about his experience um, being 
one of the participants. Um, I think it'll very much be a question of student turning to the master um, or becoming the master in this season coming. But just briefly, um, I'm a recovering lawyer. I started um, John Chisholm Consulting back in 2005, mainly around strategy, structure of law firms, but that very much morphed into business model change and particularly um, the pricing side of things, which uh, led to 2018, uh, me teaming up with David Wells and Liz Harris and, and forming the Novum Group, which is really equipping um, professionals and knowledge firms, transforming um, their business by helping them understand the value they're creating and how to capture that value with strategic pricing. And I think very much of what Michael and I are going to be involved in in the redefining value is, is as professionals looking at what value we really do provide to our, um, our, our clients. And I mean, I take a very simplistic look at, 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 at value and, you know, we all know value is subjective. It's in the eye of the beholder. All of our clients see value differently um, and, and the perception, it's just perceived value. Value is no more whatever we do in our everyday lives of the benefits receive over the price price we pay. And um, Michael and I, as we'll talk about in a minute, um, hope to work with um, professionals, um, firms, organisations that really want to uncover the true value they're providing to their clients and, and I mean, as most of you know, I think it's very demeaning, particularly to, to good specialised professionals that um, for too long now, the value we provide to our customers is simply be defined by unit of time. And I think um, we're much better than that. And the work we did with uh, our group this year in particular, uh, the um, inaugural uh, group in particular, just emphasised um, how when you really understand the value that you're providing to your clients. Um, you can provide great benefits to your, to your customers and also to yourselves and to your team members. So Michael, over to you. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, I guess a bit about myself. I'm a failed journalist, I suppose, that decided to put my law, um, law degree to use around about 12 years ago um, and had some wonderful experiences in about just over three years ago. Um, decided to put up my own shingle and, and build a team and um, and try and you know do law how I saw it could be, could best be done um, and part of that from day one was looking at what value is and going on that extra existential I can't say words today it's already Monday and I'm broken but um, on that journey to looking at what value is and, and how to define it and and how to Look in a way that benefits both um, a business or benefits a business, benefits clients, and and benefits a team, benefits the employees, the people working in it, and the and the culture and the human side that sits behind that. Um, and in the three years, we we sort of grew probably quickly. Um, so we're we're a team of over twenty five people now, and um, I was very fortunate to be able to be, um, be coached by John um, with his colleague David Wells last year and, and that really did, um, to, to speak from that student perspective, help us fast track and um, reevaluate and reassess and, and have a pretty critical look at what we thought value was and what kind of model we wanted to build for our clients and, and our team and what tools and, and things we're going to put around that while still trying to make sure we could be a, um, a business with the right amount of revenue and, and, and still be profitable. So um, I, I really got a lot out of, out of it. Um, the people I worked with, um, you know, the other people going through the program as well as um, having that opportunity to learn from, from John and David and, um, and take on board their, you know, their coaching style. It was, it was very much a, a coaching approach. Was a, I've, I've been through a few programs. We've had mentorship and those things before, but this was, um, yeah, it was a, it was a pretty special journey. And for us, it meant we accelerated a program we've been, we've been caught on for a long time. Um, we looked at it, redid it, and 
and kept moving. So, you know, for us, it was, um, you know, customer experience, it's user experience, it's looking at tools, it's sort of touching on a lot of the areas that um, you know, I've scribbled down some wonderful ideas that people have already talked about in the last in the last little while. Um, but I guess, yeah, jumping onto the next slide, um, John, I suppose you can talk about how, how we look at it. Yeah, and, and I think just taking up from what Michael said, uh, doing this for a number of years, and I know we emphasise the pricing as distinct from billing and particularly hourly billing, but uh, not just with the group we had last year in Michael's firms, but other firms we've worked with, just see how once you do change your pricing um, strategy, and it's a mindset change and it is a business model change, it's just almost the the you know, thin edge of the wedge. It, it opens up so much more opportunities for the for the for the firm uh, internally, relationship with uh, with with clients, and um, uh, yeah. And and I guess until you're actually experienced, it's 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 a bit hard to you know um, explain. But there's um, you know certainly having Michael on board can talk about the benefits that it's had for for. For his firm, and I think also, um, if if you're going to change um, your, your your business model or the way you want things, you can't still keep measuring the things as you were in the past. So, we have to look at new key predictive indicators, metrics, compensation models, those sorts of things. And um, so, we think with our shared experience that we can perhaps guide and help, but. I, I have to emphasize, just as we talk about value is subjective, value in what participants want out of this and also what they're trying to achieve. Um, it, it differs from every every firm. Michael's firm differed to you know what some others firms did. So um, it has to be tailored to your own your own purpose, your own ideas and and you know what you want to get out of your life as a professional. Yeah, I agree, John. It's, it's such a wonderful box because once you open it, there's so many things you can start to look at. Um, and once you start to look at what value what value means and you know, from my perspective, it started from a purpose, you know, looking at the purpose of the business and then delving in deep from there. But the impact on everything from culture to the strategy we took to um, the kind of clients you want to work for, what you look like in the marketplace, how once you've got a sense of what, what you want to do with value and I use that as a very broad term there but there's it, it's a box that can be opened and lead you down lots and lots and lots of different rabbit holes and you can come out with some very wonderful things at the end um, so yeah we're really excited to work with um, some businesses in that in that respect and organizations trying to do cool new things that's great thanks Terry back to you yeah. Thank you very much folks we're very near the end of this session I just want to again um, extend my thanks and gratitude to all the coaches that you've heard from and hopefully as you're listening to them lots of ideas have been bubbling up but also just getting a, a perhaps a better understanding of the sorts of things that you could propose projects in and also get to know them a little bit more. Um, I have the great honour of knowing all of these folks and have done for a long time and I can only underscore and assure you that you're really in not just very good hands, but exceptional hands, um, should you be successful and, um, and work with them on your project. So just to reiterate some key deadlines for you here, we're obviously in this session today. The next big one is going to be the 5th of July. Um, obviously then a couple of notes uh, again about when you'll hear back from us and when we need to hear back from you. So just bear those in mind. If you're looking for the information that we referred to, you'll need to go to the Centre for Legal Innovation website. You will see a tab called Legalpreneurs Lab and there's a drop down called Incubators or you can go directly to um, this web address to take you um, straight to the page and all the documentation collected on that page um, that you'll need to have a look at. If you need to contact us, again, don't forget it's the LP Lab email address. Um, and you will see here also a phone number if you need to contact us. Uh, and of course, notifications about this will continue to go out through the website, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, we are just now on the end of time. If you've got any questions from anything here, again, 
uh, don't hesitate to address it to us by phone or by email. We are really, really looking forward to this, our second program and to working with you. You've had the great opportunity here to hear not just from the coaches, but from a couple of people who have been through and are finishing up the inaugural program. So you've got added insight, if you like, into it. Um, we really, really look forward to you um, joining us. Please don't forget to get those applications in on time going to be incredibly important. Uh, thank you again to all of the coaches that are here. Um, thank you to Jan as well. And thank you for all of you for being on uh, this session today. We look forward to seeing you again really soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye.